What's good with the YouTube? Y'all already know, Big Flacco with a convict's perspective, man. This is ACP. You already know what your boys... You know, the first paragraph, man, it's not really written the best, man, but it basically goes into that, you know, uh, the role of the Maravilla's relationship between Maravilla and the MA that has been so significant over the years that some of these new individuals that are from these hoods don't even know um, the back history of, of, of the Maravilla and MA, you know? A lot of them only know today is tax free or resist the MA, you know, which is what he this article keys up on in the beginning. Um, now, the Maravilla gangs are located in East Los Angeles in a vast area patrolled by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. We already know what's time with them. They are probably the most corrupt law enforcement agency that there is. As is the case with most Sudanian street gangs, each individual gang possesses unique territories that physically separate them from other territories. A breakdown of each Maravilla barrio reveals an indicator about its name origination. The following Maravilla gangs are named after streets. Arizona, Fisher, Ford, Frazier, Gage, Kern, Mariana, and Pomroy. Other Maravilla gangs include High Times, Juarez, Lomita, Lopez, Lote, Rock, Moria, Maravilla Projects, Rascos, and Maravilla Rifa. El Hoyo, Maravilla Spanish for the marvelous hole utilizes the shortened version Oyo Mata or HM and is the most notorious. Consider the original Maravilla gang. Its physical location was re referred to as the hole because of the lower terrain in which it was situated. El Hoyo, El Hoyo Mata traces its roots to the Prohibition era in the 1920s and has a distinction of surrendering 17 of its top gang members to the Mexican Mafia's rank and file. The Maravilla gangs should be historically recognized for their contribution to the establishment of and the resistance to the Mexican Mafia. So basically they're saying that they played a role on both sides. For almost a half century from 1957 until the 2000s, there existed a dysfunctional love-hate relationship between Maravilla and the Mexican Mafia. The love between Maravilla and the MA began in the early years following the Mexican Mafia's formation in 1957. When Lu Luis... Weddle, Buff, Flores embarked upon his mission to recruit the cream of the crop, the leaders of the predominantly Southern California-based street gangs. Maravilla gang members were among the first MA to come aboard. Some of the original Mexican Mafia members from Maravilla included Gabriel Little Sluggo Castaneda, Richard Rico Diaz, and Luis Luis Arajo, and Rafael Chispa Sandoval, each belonging to the, to the Oya Maravilla gang. Now, what's interesting is Louis Arajo ended up being becoming an NF later on and also wrote the first NF constitution under the Padrino system. Now, the first documented Mexican Mafia prison murder occurred on December 12, 1961 at San Quentin. It was committed by Alfredo Cuate Jimenez, also a member of El Hoyo Maravilla, who stabbed M.A. Abel Neveres to death in the prison's vacation and guard. Neveres sustained 18 stab wounds to his arms and chest and was killed over a drug-related dispute. To all those romanticists who enjoy the narrative of how the Mexican Mafia was once the defenders of La Raza, they turned against their own people. That is an inaccurate story. Like the vast majority of ethnic criminal organizations, La Emma has never been motivated by ethnic pride, nor is, is it even mentioned in their reglas. Now, they say Joe Morgan actually um, joined the Ford Maravilla a much you know as a much older gang member in 1957 he would later join the ma in um, Folsom anyone who is truly familiar with the chemistry and composition of his hispanic street gangs can tell you most gangs in the 50s and 60s had their token of white boys <laughs> these were non-hispanic gang members who lived in gang areas were embraced by their street peers and probably had to work harder than most to prove their worthiness many of them like joe morgan Weddle shy um, Weddle from VNE, Little Weddle from Florencia are some examples that quickly come to mind. Now, as we know, the MA started in DBI around 1957. Um, some of its original members were actually uh, from Maravilla. Now, a lot of gang members from Maravilla resented, you know, the MA at one time. In 1963, Tony Chacon from Lopez Maravilla was stabbed to death on the San Quentin exercise yard by MA enforcers Eddie Pelo Moreno from Norwalk and Richard Richie Reese from Bakersville. This hit punched away the Mexican Mafia's lack of tolerance for any resistance from Hispanic inmate population, including Maravilla, and the hate originated during this period. Now, there was two major incidents that occurred that led up to the 
September uh, 15th, 1968, what they called the straw that broke the camel's back, the all-out blitz with the NF rushing the, the MA. There was a February 4th, 1968 murder of James Sonny Pena from El Hoyo, Maravilla, over a drug debt. He was killed by uh, Ro Robert Robot Salas, a Mexican mafia member who was from Big Hazard. Now, on September 14th, 1968, Manuel Minito Romero from El Hoyo, Maravilla, and his cell partner, who was a uh, mad dog uh, Padilla, they got into a dispute over a stolen pair of shoes, boots, whatever. Both got stabbed in, in, by robot Salas once again. Now, after this incident occurred, this was like the straw that broke the camel's back. And what the NF did was is they formed an alliance with uh, the Texas car and the Maravilla car, that they were gonna be the first wave to take out the rest of the MA members that were on that yard, which were Ponchi Amado, uh, Frog Valdez and Tati Torres. In the process of this, uh, you know, stage attack, um, an individual named uh, Cricket Gallegos was, ended up being murdered. Now, hostilities how rekindled with the NF and MA again. And this is what led to the Cheyenne murder, was there was two brothers that were from Maravilla. One of them was a Familiano, right? And what ended up happening, right, one of them got stabbed. In the process, this is what led, you know what I'm saying, to them taking the initiative, right, to go to war with the MA. This is when they killed Cheyenne, okay, because there was supposed to be a peace treaty. They ended up getting him, him and his brother. And uh, from there, since their word was not honored, the NF decided to kill Cheyenne. Now, before that, though, there was another hit that happened, which was an individual named uh, Robert Daya Medino from San Fernando. This was October 17, 1972. He was released from AC to general population. And he knew as soon as he hit that yard, his life was in, in danger because it was a Mexican mafia stronghold now. Medina requested assistance from inmate Frank Quemado Venegas, a member of the Hoya Maravilla gang and a previous NF ally. Vengas declined, choosing to become a neutral observer rather than incur the inmate's wrath. Medina, Medina then succeeded in securing a prison made shank from a BGF member and proceeded to stab Venegas to death. Following this incident, most of the VA inmates disassociated themselves altogether from the NF and remained neutral in the conflict. An increasing segment of Maravilla members aligned with the Mexican Mafia. Now, previously before that, there was a lot of Maravillas that were supportive of the NF. Now, on May 26, 1976, Mexican Mafia members Robert Robot Salas and Daniel Spider Ariaga shot Manuel Minito Romero of Hoya Maravilla one of Robot's victims in the events that led to the 1968 shoe war at San Quentin to death in his Mana Villa residence. It is noteworthy to mention that Spider, like Minito, was from El Hoyo Mana Villa. On October 25, 1976, Henry Tuffy Torres, a longtime member of El Hoyo Mana, was stabbed to death at Los Angeles Men's County Jail on the orders of the Mexican Mafia. Tuffy was suspected, suspected of participating in the street gang murder of the brother of MA member Champ Reynoso. There was always multitudes of street gang members waiting in line to make their bones, and doing a favor with an MA member made this individual look good. A Sureño gang member, Richard Chio Escobita, picked up the murder contract. Tuffy's execution, which took place in a holding cell that housed inmates going to and returning from court, became the first recorded homicide committed at that facility. In the Mexican Mafia's 62-year history, 22 members have originated from the Mata Villa street gang. 17 of those were from El Hoya Maravilla. During the 1980s and 1990s, many of the Maravilla gang members continued to be alienated from general inmate population and were looked up on with disfavor by the Mexican Mafia. As Maravilla convicts would win their release on state parole, their older members began to spread the anti-MA sentiment inside the Maravilla neighborhoods, warning that they too were in danger of incurring the MA street wrath. One of the most vocal Maravilla um, uh, opponents was Robert Huito Marquez, a heroin addict from El Hoya, Mata, who had dropped out of the MA in the late 70s. Because Maravilla street gangs were known for being close-knit and proud of their Maravilla roots, they believed the report that the Mexican Mafia had declared war on all Maravilla and an attempted movement against the MA started to exist. The known as scares were then targeted by the MA. Because a very large number of Mexican Mafia members were themselves from Maravilla, the MA agree agreed to refrain from placing a blanket green light on all Maravilla gangs at that time. Beginning in the early 90s, Maravilla gangs openly declared their opposition to MA authority and refused to pay taxes. These uh, 
Maravilla tax resistors call themselves Los Maravillosos, Villosos, the marvelous ones. The MA response was swift and merciless. Maravilla gang members were targeted in county jails and prisons throughout California. Brutal attacks occurred and all Sudeño gangs turned against them. The MA green light on Maravilla necessitated the response from law enforcement community to protect those, these inmates upon entry into the jail. So basically it says in this article that they were placed in um, protective custody, but I, I don't think that they were put like in a PC like with other PCs. I think they were separated from the rest of the fellas. Now at the behest of MA's Ernest Chuco Castro and Tonito Payne, a member of the Ma Mariana Maravilla gang, they were asked to attend a meeting at the home of Mary Nena Reese, mother of MA member Little Mo Reese, who was also Payne's first cousin. Tonito, who was considered a Sudanian while in prison, agreed to join the meeting in order to discuss the unification of gangs for the purpose of halting the drive-bys. During the course of the conference, it was discovered that Payne had come armed with a pistol, which was considered an act of aggression towards the MA. He was disarmed and assaulted by Castro and the other MA participants. The, the Maravillas would remain on the green light. Following the failed negotiations, Maravilla members began to tag tax-free into their gang graffiti to advertise their continued independence of the Mexican Mafia Authority and freedom from MA taxation. After nearly four decades of being on leper status and being ostracized by the MA and the Sureño underworld, Maravilla gang members were brought into the Mexican Mafia's criminal umbrella. This occurred around October 6, 2000. Alfred Chato Sandoval, the highest ranking Mexican Mafia member on California's death row, had his death sentence overturned by the Federal Ninth, Court, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. Convicted of four brutal homicides in Los Angeles, Sandoval had returned to the LA County Jail for an appeal of his death sentence. Representing the Arizona Maravilla Street Gang and utilizing his credibility as a proven and respected Mexican Mafia member, Sandoval became instrumental in removing Maravilla's gangs from the MA's kill on sight list. Except for a small pocket of token resistance, Maravilla gang members are now considered Sudanios. The scattered few Maravilla gangs who oppose MA's rule remain on the green light list. By co opting the Maravillas into his crew and into the Sudanios' fold, Sandoval's shrewd business acumen resulted in the creation of a criminal empire within the Maravillas. From the confines of his prison cell, Sandoval is compensated for his coup by becoming the sole Maravilla Mexican member to control all of his territories. You know, from the beginning to the early stages, man, you know, 1990s on, on forth, man, there's been numerous gangs that have gone against the MA and its taxation, man. Um, you know, like we, like we discussed many other gangs before, man. Um, and neither, none of them have really last. None of them have really been able to establish a foothold. Maravilla was probably one of the ones that was able to go the longest, man. I mean, it's like 17 neighborhoods. It's, it's a huge territory, man. But the strange thing is, is like with the gang being, gang being a lifestyle, some of these Maravilla cats didn't even get along with each other, man. You know, um, I've heard different stories of certain Maravillas that were on, on yards when the green light was implemented on them, like around 89. And uh, they were actually trying to uh, uh, coexist with other factions that were typically, you know, enemies of the fucking, the, the M.A., in Sudanios, man, you know, I remember I heard one story, man, about them approaching the homeboys in Tatsby, man, and saying, like, look, you know, um, someone, in, someone before I said that I'm full of shit, but this came straight out of fucking Chuko's mouth. Chuko told me that they came up to him and said, look, we stand against the MA. We're not your oppositions. We're not your MA. And this was on a level four yard back in the like late 80s, 90s. Right. And he said one of them kind of did it, did it like, deliberately put himself in a prone position to where he could easily be attacked just to show that he was not a threat. Now, I know someone was questioning this in the comments, but this was told to me directly from, you know, one of the highest ranking NF members in the state. I remember hearing this because it kind of shocked me because I never heard about Sudanios that were against the MA and that would sympathize towards the NF cause. Um, or not, not sympathize towards the NF cause, just, but they weren't in opposition. Okay. Now, Malavia now, from my understanding, is mostly in the fold. I guess there may be a couple of hoods or a couple of individuals that I want to resist that taxation. Or there's a few hoods that don't even, aren't even paying taxes, but they're not on the green light list, man. In any event, you know, uh, Manavia's history is very, uh, it was very impactful. You know, every key incident and issue, there was a Manavia member involved almost. You know, from the, from the initial stages uh, before the... Uh, before the shoe war started, those two murders that happened, or one murder, one hit, 
those were very key in deciding on them aligning with the NF back then. Um, the other incident, Louis Arajo was an MA member who decided to leave when they made it a blood in, blood out oath around 1960, 1961. He later joined the NF and wrote their first ever constitution. Okay. As we already know, the brothers, you know, Gilbert and them, that got hit by the MA in December of 1972 in Chino, that led to Cheyenne being killed, right? So everything that, everything that has occurred within the MA, NF, and whatnot that was a major, major scale in the 60s, 70s, the Montevilla were involved. You know, bear in mind, they've also had a, a gang of, of mafiosos as well, man. So it's been, like I said, a love-hate relationship, you know. I guess there's some of those that decided to go one direction, some of them wanted to go another direction. And for a long time, man, we were always hearing about the Montevilla being greenlit by the MA, you know. I never knew the details of how it occurred. This article kind of goes into a lot. It kind of establishes that, look, you know, uh, it all started by them being enforced, um, suppressive and oppressive type tactics on them you know what i mean like you know one of theirs doesn't apply they get hit um one of them doesn't align with their beliefs they get hit you know and it's like anybody man if you have a homeboy that's from your hood and you guys are tight and you see them get attacked for no reason by someone who thinks they're superior of course you're going to clap back and that's a prime example of what happened with this you know the only other gang to really go against the grain was the bulldogs the Bulldogs became their own little faction in Fresno. But Maravilla, Bulldogs, then you had the New Flowers, the Northern Riders. You know, all these groups, they're basically uh, um, giving birth with the same concept, man, to fight against aggression and oppression of their own people, man. And, uh, you know, I wasn't there during this time era of what happened, but these are all historical facts of how certain events transpired between the NF and MA and how many Maravilla members were actually involved. And it seemed like every time an MA member, I mean, a Maravilla member got killed or hit, the NF are the ones that reacted to this, man. You know, um, times have changed. You know, the MA have, uh, they are very strong down south, man. They got every Sureño that's pretty much under their Mandera. It's just like the NF. They just have more gang members to choose from. And they got a really tight-knit um control mechanism over their people down south, man. There's a lot of dudes that will quickly go ride, go put in work at the drop of a dime when they're requested to, you know, and uh, them being able to bring the Mata Vian into fold, this is a lot, man. Now, to what extent are they involved? I don't know. I've heard different things. Some say that there are some hoods that are strictly involved. They're out there uh, engaged in illicit activities. Then there's those that say, nah, they're not paying taxes, but they're not, they're being left alone. And then there's those that I'd say there's a couple hoods that may still have a green light on them. I don't know, you know. I just know that, uh, you know, that for a minute, what would occur was there'd be a green light on them on the streets. But when they went to prison, they would fucking drop their Mata Villa set and bang sued. That was going on for a while, too, guys. People forget about that, man. Anyways, man, I thought this would be a good top topic to touch on, man, because, uh, you know, it, it's one of the very few gangs... To have a long, extensive conflict with a powerful organization like the MA that's still around. You know, like some of these hoods, man, that you hear about, like Low Street and all that, man, they're not as active as they once were. You know what I'm saying? Because anytime anybody has any type of resistance or um, response that the MA deems uh, disrespectful, they're going to put that green light on you. Look what happened to the Mongols. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a prime example, man. Same thing here. You know, uh, but the Mata Villa had enough manpower and firepower to fight back, you know, and they were getting it from all ends. Because when that green light was put on them, every hood was gunning for the Mata Villa at that time, man. And Mata Villa alone was still feuding with each other over there, man. That's the crazy thing, man. But like I said, man, Mata Villa, a hood that's rich in history. Um, when you think of East L.A., they're probably one of the first gangs that I think of. You know what I'm saying? Besides, there's a few other ones as well, man, but... I think Mata Villa has pretty much been the, the standard of what you look at as far as when you think East L.A. Anyways, this is your boy Flacco. Hope you guys enjoyed this, man. A um, little bit about Mata Villa and the conflict, man. Now, one thing I wanted to point out. Not one time in this article have I noticed that there was ever any Mata Villa killing an M.A. member. 
Now, that's not to say that never happened, man, but I think that's something key to point out of why they were maybe brought back. You know what I'm saying? Like a uh, MS-13 already has multiple bodies on MA members. That's going to be a forever conflict with that federal branch faction. You know what I'm saying? But there's nowhere that I can see where it shows any Madavia murdered any MA member. Anyways, with that said, hit the like, subscribe. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gone.